Welcome back to our series on estate planning. My name is Thomas A. Bushnell. I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in Idaho, Washington, and California. Today we're going to be talking about Medicaid estate recovery. Medicaid, not Medicare, Medicaid estate recovery. What is Medicaid? Medicaid is a payer of last resort. It's the pay for medical needs of people who would otherwise wouldn't get care because they just can't afford it. In the next video after this one, we'll talk about Medicaid eligibility rules. And in the last video in the series, we're going to show you some strategies to avoid Medicaid liens against your estate when you pass away. So Medicaid estate recovery. Medicaid is the big camel that's going to get its nose under the tent, if at all possible. So the question is, how does Medicaid file liens? Under what conditions do they put a lien against? What would give rise to a lien for Medicaid? Basically, how can the camel get his nose under the tent? So the first thing we need to know, and now in California it's called Medi-Cal, and I'm going to be speaking specifically to Idaho law today. Uh, if you are from California and want a state plan, I can help you as well, but this is going to be sticking to Idaho law. And with Washington and California, the rules and the numbers will be different, uh, but there's a lot of the same principles that apply. So the first thing we need to look at is how old are you? This is you, X. If you are over 55 years of age and you get Medicaid, not Medicare, I want to stress that, Medicaid, then any benefits you receive from Medicaid after the age of 55, or in California, Medi-Cal, are subject to a state recovery. So what are they? Well, let's start with the first one. The first one here is if you're un over 55 and under 65. Okay, over 55, under 65, and you make less than 139% of the poverty level and you have no health insurance. Well, today it's still against the law not to have health insurance. I know that uh, the, the Congress and the, and the Senate and the President got rid of the penalty for not having health insurance, but it's still a law, but there's no penalty to it. But you can today go on the exchange. It's called the Affordable Care Act. Has anyone ever heard of the Affordable Care Act? It's affectionately known as Obamacare. Okay, so the Affordable Care Act. If you're over 55 and under 65 and make under 139% of the poverty level, you can go on to the exchange in your state and you can buy health insurance. My understanding of the bronze plan right now costs $1,200 a month. Okay. And it's got a $7,000 deductible. That's what we have around here. That's a horrible plan. That's not saving the average family of four, $4,500 or $2,500, whatever was promised. This is $1,200 a month with a $7,000 deductible. But if you make under 139% of the poverty level, lucky, lucky you, you can get a subsidy. Now, these subsidies range, most of them range, between 800 and they can be different to $1,200 a month. So you would be paying anywhere from $400 a month to $0 a month for a plan that's got a $7,000 deductible. Still not that good, especially at $400 a month. But you get the subsidy every month. They would pay that much of your premium, $800 to $1,200. Guess what? You're over 55, aren't you? The reason I put it here is 65, you start taking Medicare, so you'd be out of this. But if you're in this age range and you're, you're getting the subsidy, guess what, boys and girls? It's not a subsidy. It's a no interest loan. And when you pass away, this could be subject to Medicaid estate recovery. Some states are going after it now. Some states are not. But if you know the way government goes and the way government grows, it's just a matter of time before all jurisdictions, if I pull out my crystal ball, they will be coming after this. So you might be saying, oh, I'm only 56 and our state's not coming after it. Well, just wait 20 years. Wait 30 years and you pass away and the government is scraping for more money. So it's a no interest loan to, uh, from the government to you that they're going to get. 
you didn't know this was in there? It's an unintended consequence? Maybe Nancy Pelosi was right. In order to find out what's in the bill, you got to pass it. The second way that the uh, camel can get his nose under the tent after the Affordable Care Act is if your Medicaid pays for your Medicare. There's no estate recovery on Medicare, but if Medicaid pays for your Medicare, then there is. It works like this. Pretend over this way, sitting in a chair over here, is Medicaid estate recovery. These are the people over here who, after you pass away, will put a lien on your estate to get money back that Medicaid paid for your health care after the age of 55. Then over in a chair over on this side, we have the people who help you sign up. Medicaid eligibility. Two separate parts of the government. One is recovery. One is eligibility. So what happens if, let's say you were very shrewd throughout your life, and you found ways not to pay into Social Security and you're able to keep more of your money. Good for you. But let's say you failed to save and now your Social Security coming in each month is say about $700 or less. Well, the folks over at Medicaid, now this is just a general, don't be too specific on this, but the people over in Medicaid eligibility will say, oh, you're poor. Okay, and if you otherwise qualify for Medicaid, in other words, you don't have two homes, so we'll get into Medicaid qualifications in the next video, but if you otherwise qualify, you can get Medicaid to pay for your Medicare, because normally, if you recall in the last video on Medicare, they deduct money from your Social Security check every month to pay for your Medicare. If that's not happening, if Medicaid is paying for your Medicare, then they're not deducting money from your Social Security check. So that money each month could be about $140 to $150 a month is subject to a state recovery to those guys over there. Well, what about a copay? Sometimes if they're, if they're paying the copay, depends upon they are or not, that is subject over here. What about things not covered by Medicare? And Medicaid picks it up. Well, those are subject to a state recovery too. Now, in every time, without exception, when there's been a claim by Medicaid estate recovery, to re and, and they do go after it, when there's been a claim by Medicaid estate, estate recovery, and the person had Medicaid paying for their Medicare, and then they died, the children had no idea. I have yet to see a time where the parents have informed the children and the children understand that Medicaid's paying for the Medicare, so there's going to be a lien. They come in every time they say, oh no, there is no Medicaid lien. Well, what I have to do here in Idaho is if you're over 55, I must, uh, by, uh, by law, give notice to the Medicaid estate recovery people and then they can check to see if there's any lien like this. These liens can be fairly small in the range of $7,000. They can be pretty large, 90,000, 100,000 or more. So they could really cut into your estate if you're taking having Medicaid pay for your Medicare. If at all possible, if you can have your money deducted from your Social Security check, you'd be money ahead. That's the second way. The next way the camel can get his proverbial nose under the tent is through what's called community-based services. What's that? Oh, that's like oxygen, in-home care, things of that nature that you're over 55 and Medicaid is paying for. If you get services like that that Medicaid pays for, there, your estate could be subject to estate recovery. What does that mean? That means the Medicaid estate recovery people put a lien against your estate when you pass away uh, to get their money to recover as much as they can. The next way that the camel gets his nose under the tent is assisted living. Assisted living as opposed to the fifth way, which is long-term care. What's the difference? Long-term care is basically full-blown nursing home, skilled nursing facility. Assisted living is it's an assisted living facility. You're still living on your own, but it's assisted. Assisted living here this year in North Idaho is costing about $3,800 a month whereas the extended care facility the nursing home in town costs 
$8,000 a month. If Medicaid is paying for your assisted living or your nursing home care, and sometimes if you need a secured facility uh, because you're prone to wander or you have a dementia of some kind, uh, that's going to cost $10,000, $12,000 a month. And if you don't have the money to pay that, if you don't have uh, long-term care insurance and your estate runs out of money, uh, then Medicaid is going to be paying for that. Or if you're eligible for Medicaid, you can still keep your house, but they're going to be paying for that. And when you pass away, the folks at Medicaid Estate Recovery are going to put a lien against your estate. And at $8,000 a month, that adds up to a lot of money in a hurry.